I will never spend my Bitcoin right now until it raises to where I think it needs to be. Remember that number, 100 million. I firmly bet my life that not in my lifetime, but maybe in my children's children's lifetime, that one Bitcoin, today that's worth 40,000, is going to be worth about $100 million. So what do I do? I buy and stack for my kids. You can stack for your future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bitcoin Business Basics. I'm smiling because every time I see these new commercials, I just think they're phenomenal. This team is incredible, uh, and all that they do is incredible. And so I, I'm just excited about that. But hello, everybody, and welcome to, again, Bitcoin Business Basics. Uh, we have an incredible show for you today. I'm really, really excited because when I got into this Bitcoin space and this crypto space, I went looking for everything Bitcoin, anything I could find Bitcoin. I bought it is probably here in the brick and mortar. Uh, but I went to get these Bitcoin energy drinks and I bought a couple cases and we had some events and people drank up the Bitcoin energy drinks and we were all excited about those drinks. And I went back to order some more and they were no longer there. Uh, they had sold out. And so I am just as excited today because this gentleman that you all see here, his name is Mayo. Um, he actually has a Bitcoin line. And I'm super excited because I cannot wait to get my hands on some bottles of Bitcoin wine. Now, I'm not going to drink these. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep them for souvenirs all around. <laughs> there are no, I'm going to taste one at least, but I'm, I'm going to keep my souvenirs uh, so that we can show them. And so um, I'm really, really excited about Bitcoin wines. And so we're going to have a little bit of a talk today. But before we get going with mail, I want to make sure that everybody goes to the DFRtour.com and registers. Um, you know what? There's not a registration link, but there's actually a link if you want to become a city ally uh, for the Digital Financial Revolution Tour. We will be going, coming to 41 cities around the country to educate on cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Uh, and we will also be just really having a good time and you'll get a chance to meet other like minded people that are out ready to uh, help educate you as well. Then I also like to ask everyone to do me a favor today and to download the KBLA app. So there is a station that I'm just starting on, uh, but the app is called KBLA Talk 1580. And if you go on your Apple Store or your and in your in your place Google Play Store, you can download KBLA. Download that app for me, please. Uh, I want to show the station what kind of support we get in our cryptocurrency community. And every day I am teaching uh, a show called Ahead of the Crypto Curve. So please go there. The other thing I would like to share with you all is to go to the virtualundergroundrailroad.io. Again, that's virtualundergroundrailroad.io. Uh, we are starting... Um, to really get our community going. And I would love for you all to be a part of it. And I just wanted to share that with you today. So without further ado, we will begin talking and getting some information from Mr. Mayo. So Mayo, welcome to, to Bitcoin Business Basics. How are you today? I'm alive and well, no complaints. Uh, thank you for having me. Pretty excited to oh, be here. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you for coming. We appreciate you today. So Mayo, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you grew up. Um, yeah, tell us who you are. Yeah, so my name is Mayo Kindle or Mayo if you're outside the US. Um, so I was originally born in Nigeria and then uh, moved here when I was around six to Texas. Um, you know, since then I played football and then through that I went to university in San Antonio at Trinity University. Um, during my time there, uh, I studied abroad in Spain for about a year, and that was actually mm -hmm. like my first introduction to wine. 
And I was lucky enough that it was like good wine because we had like a programs through our um, school actually for us to do like wine tasting. And um, up until then, I never even like looked at wine. Um, okay. And especially because I was underage, I never like <laughs> was one of those kids. I never had a fake ID or anything. So I just was like, I'll wait till I'm 21. But obviously in Spain, drinking age is 18. So um, I was able to go to wine tastings while I was out there. So that was like kind of like my first introduction. I was like, oh no, this is like a really great experience, right? Especially if you pair it with the right foods, you can actually like really enjoy it. Um, and then, you know, after I studied international business and finance, um, and during my time there, I started taking Spanish, right? Because being in Texas, we have a, a, a high, you know, Hispanic population here. Mm -hmm. And I thought about all the languages that, you know, at, at our school, they, they kind of give you a, a minimum that everybody has to study up to like intermediate two of a certain language, right? So mm -hmm. I chose Spanish because I was like, oh, Smart. being in Texas, it's a uh, language I'll be able to utilize. Um, whether it's with business or just, you know, communicating with the people around me. Um, and so, you know, even while I was in school uh, for one of my spring breaks, we actually took a cruise and we ended up in Mexico. Um, and so even then I was like, okay, yeah, this is definitely the language I should be picking up. Uh, mm -hmm. And through there, after graduation, I kept traveling a lot. Um, and Mexico is one of my like favorite destinations. And through there, just continuing to like learn more about the people, the culture, and 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 just you know, kind of immersing myself in the language, to where like now I'm like conversational in, in Spanish. So through there is kind of how I was introduced to uh, I would say like the tequila industry. Um, you know, being exposed to tequilas that you know compared to college, where you just kind of take the shot, hold your breath, and wish for the best. You know, I kind of started experiencing tequilas where it's like, whoa, this is like amazing. <laughs> this is, we don't need ice, we don't need a mixer, we don't need anything. And, you know, through, you know, even though I was working in corporate, you know, in the back of my head since I was a kid, I, I knew I was gonna be an entrepreneur, right? Um, and, you know, corporate was kind of for me to kind of learn things of how to kind of properly structure the business, how to uh, run it globally, because I was working for management consulting firms that were global management consulting firms. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of through that pathway, a lot of the things I learned in those corporate jobs, I, I, have, I was able to apply in my like in my current entrepreneurial endeavors. So it's been like extremely helpful uh, being able to pick up those skills and utilize them now for myself. Um, because some of the things I was doing, I would see that, you know, whether it was data migration or mergers and acquisitions or, you know, uh, just a bunch of different, I was like, man, if, if we're working with like tens of millions, hundred million of dollars, like if I'm doing this for a company, why can't I do this for myself? Do this for right? yourself. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of like, that kind of like pushed me out into like, okay, maybe you should, you know, just go out of limb because especially because I'm, you know, I would say I'm a little bit younger. So I have, you know, this is the time where you can fall flat on your face and you'll be okay. Right. And, you know, since I was a kid, I, I kind of had a, a little bit different mindset because when I would, you know, drive around and uh, see people that had really nice cars or had really nice houses or were really successful, everybody was in, you know, their 50s or 60s. And I think with social media, everybody kind of expects themselves to already be successful and rich in their 20s. And it's just not realistic. Right. So I, I realized I had to build something for the long term. And this was something that I saw that, like, you know, it can be something where it's, uh, whether it's cash flow is something that's, you know, generational that, you know, can kind of build a legacy for. So that's kind of how I moved into this space that I'm in now. All right. Well, I want to say big kudos to you for all that you have done and seen and just really having the foresight because, you know, you don't find many young people uh, that are thinking ahead like like I hear that you're thinking. And so I think it's incredible. So so are you a, so I just learned this term because my husband and I watched something, a sommelier, I watched this whole thing. No. <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm never gonna be one of those people that like, acts like now I'm just like this complete expert, right? I just like good wines. And I realized there's this kind of gap in the wine and spirit space where there's no like, not let me not say no, but there isn't a lot of overlap with wine and spirits and technology. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and a lot of the technology that's available that I see is like uh, can have high utility. There's kind of, you know, there's a gap in between who kind of runs these businesses and who's in control versus like what they realize is actually possible. Right. So some of the things that I'm extremely comfortable with in terms of the technology I use every day, uh, some other companies would have to go pay millions of dollars for like a market survey to see if it's mm -hmm. something that's viable when I'm like, it's, of course, it's viable. It's, it's something that 
you know, everybody has their phone, they have a camera or there's an NFC reader, right? And right. they just like clicked immediately, right? And I realized too, being a, a millennial, that a lot of these brands, a lot of these companies are making products targeted at us, right? So mm -hmm. for me, it's not like, it's not me having to do a market survey or pay a, a company to kind of find information. <laughs> I kind of just think about what I would want or I can like hit up my, my friend, you know, group chat and say, hey, what do you guys think about this? And get feedback from them because those are the people that are going to be buying the product anyway. Right, right. So Absolutely. I've kind of had like a, a little bit of a leg up there. Okay. But no, I'm not a sommelier. Uh, I just like good, good alcohol, good wine, good, good spirits, and like good experiences. I realized that uh, everything I went to as an adult, whether even when I turned 21 and I was a senior in, in college, everything we went to for as an adult, whether it's sports, music, art, entertainment, it has alcohol at it. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, oh, well, if I utilize this as my foundational business, then I right. can kind of like embed myself in a bunch of different industries. And, you know, that's why I kind of utilize this as my first entrepreneur endeavor, because then I can kind of expand into whatever space I want to afterwards. Yes, yes, yes. And I just love your entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, there's some other things that we're going to talk about a little bit later down the line that you're doing. Um, have you thought about putting your seed to sale on blockchain for your wines? So, so the, 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 the thing that's kind of interesting about that is that we're going to have like a way for you to kind of like track uh provenance and authenticity through the through like the the label um mm -hmm. for for these because these are these are luxury wines but these aren't going to be like our high-end wines so we're going to have a way for people to actually see okay this is an authentic bottle coming from this brand right because the, the whole reason why i even implemented this technology and i wanted to utilize it was if you remember back in 2019 all the americans that were dying abroad where mm -hmm. people were you know people were like man are they getting kidnapped or what's going on is it drugs and turns out it was, you know, tainted alcohol. And I think for Americans, we're kind of like spoiled in a way where I don't think you've ever gone to a liquor store and bought, you know, a bottle and thought to yourself, is this real? Is like the liquor in here fake? No, because our re regulations are so, so stringent that like the chances of that happening is kind of low other than like when you hear about stories of like bars and restaurants refilling bottles right? <laughs> that's that's a whole different story <laughs> and i haven't heard many of those stories so yeah so for me i i, I knew that we were going to have a product that wasn't just going to be u.s based right you know especially with the tequila it's a very amazing package right and this is something that i see in every duty free shop and i see it you know international and so i wanted somebody to have that same confidence of going into a liquor store here in the u.s and in you know in the liquor store in in africa or in asia uh where some countries where like some of the alcohol in circulation up to like 40 to 60 percent even in some countries is counterfeit right unregulated alcohol and this, really? this kills it kills tens of thousands of people a year all around the world it's actually insane um wow. so for me i, I kind of wanted to utilize the unique packaging and tying that to technology to kind of give people that peace of mind and saying okay, now I can kind of verify this product utilizing this method to say, okay, this is a real bottle uh, that came from this this uh, distillery or from this vineyard. And, you know, I kind of have confidence digesting this, even though I'm in a country or in, I'm in a place where it, it might have kind of, you know, sketchy practices. If, if right, right, right. Wow. Okay. And I'm, I'm hearing you and I'm, I'm just from the from the layman side because I don't know exactly what the technology is and I don't want you to disclose it but I'm just from the layman side of understanding blockchain and what it could actually do just wondering if that could be something coupled with what you're doing so that you know it's everywhere and it's uh because I, I was walking through with um some folks that were doing some stuff with Chipotle remember when they had that Chipotle scare and they were looking at how blockchain and I had no idea till you just told me right now that tens of thousands of people are dying from bad liquor or uh, alcohol around the world. Like who knew? I had yeah, no idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is something that, you know, back in 2020, I actually spoke at a few conferences, one that was based in Amsterdam and two that were based in the U.S. about smart packaging because we were utilizing um, uh, certain technologies like NFC and QR codes to tie those those bottles and those those that those products to tokens on the blockchain right so you know for example each one of our high-end tequila bottles we want to actually tie that bottle 
to what everybody refers to now is so funny because we were talking about uh, NFT. What everybody... you were doing this a long time ago, right? Yeah, so, so, no, so... Okay, so, so yes, Zen, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's like Makes really cool sense. to kind of see what, what, what's happened. Like it, it's a bummer at the same time because our our NFTs weren't like a, a, a money grab. Into, if that makes sense, it was kind of just for people to realize, a like if, if it if it have if it's tied to one, then we know it came from uh, the distillery because I, you can look at, yeah. yeah, you can look at that token and see that okay, it actually comes from the Serpiente uh, wallet, right? And you can see it was issued by that wallet. You know, so even if somebody somehow makes the same bottle, the same label, and even attaches it and ties it to tokens, they can't cheat that part right that right part, they can not token. yeah so for us it was you know it just made sense it, it, we, i didn't even have to like argue with myself about it and you know, yeah it just it yeah. fell right in place mm -hmm. so i gotta ask you a question about the brand name serpiente yeah. i know that that's latin for serpent right yeah but what's your mindset behind because serpent Serpent, yeah. Just what's your mindset around yeah, the serpent? So it, it, it in Spanish it means snake, right? Uh -huh. and so the the thing about when I was starting to travel through Mexico, enjoying these like amazing, amazing high quality tequilas, was that because it didn't have like that alcoholic burn or that that bad aftertaste, uh -huh. you, would, you would drink it a little bit faster. Right? <laughs> you, you, yeah. So and I kind of it just like kind of like made sense you know how like a snake that like slithers through the grass right? yeah and by yes. the time it bites you and you realize it it's too late <laughs> Listen, so i it, saw the logo i saw the logo and i said this looks like a dangerous snake i don't know if i want to drink that alcohol so yeah. but it, it's all good i i so appreciate you and your brand I, but i love it i love it i love it so um so you have this thing called bitcoin wine right yeah, yeah. um and so Bitcoin, what incentivized you to put the word Bitcoin on the front of this bottle? Yeah. So for us, we, we you know, of course, like we believe that you know, everything is going to move to the Bitcoin standard. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like the play that we have that we were referring to these wines as liquid gold and a new standard of wine because we, we kind of look at this being a wine that the consumers can participate in. Right. So. We want to have fun things to where you know it, it's it's a wine that you can through this wine you can win events uh, uh ac like ac ac access to events of like paint and sips right mm -hmm. or even if you collect a certain amount you can actually you know possibly win a chance to design a label and be credited as like a designer a design uh consultant or something like that and actually receive money from being a part of the project right so it's not you know, we of course always want to make sure we're not, you know, tiptoeing in anything in terms of like security. So we actually want people that if you ever make money from this, you actually put in work. So right. you know, bringing people on board to actually help us design labels and, um, you know, have people be able to have input to the brand in terms of like the, the community coming together to, to design a, a special edition collection, right? You know, I, I always like, tell people to be careful about throwing around the decentralized word about, you know, this is decentralized, <laughs> you know, just like it actually makes sense. But we kind of want to like utilize something like that to have, you know, multiple people from, you know, around the country come together to actually kind of like design an edition, right? And have input from all these different people where it wasn't just the brand making all the choices. Um, so I think that's, you know, for us, it's, it's you know, a, a new way of kind of putting out and different varietals, right? Because you actually have people that are going to be purchasing the product or supporting the product, being a part of that design process. Okay, okay. And what's the um, what's the name of the tequila? Once you get that squared away, what's going to be the name yeah. of the tequila? So the name is Serpiente for the bold. Oh, for so that. Just, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the the tequila okay. short name, you know, people obviously like will say Serpiente because it's shorter. But um, for me, I like for the bold part because it's. If you even remember the bad tequila that you had, right? Even when, even if you've had bad experiences or you know the tequila you don't even like, even somebody says, "Hey, let's do a tequila shot," you kind of have that mindset, like, you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it's kind of it, 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 the way it makes you feel. It makes you kind of feel emboldened, you know. Um, and those, that's kind of the energy and, and spirit we're trying to encompass with this brand, you know, people that, you know, like to take risks because this was a huge risk for me, you know, I'll put everything on the line for this. And those are the kind of people we're trying to like bring into the brand and support, whether it's artists, musicians, 
uh, entrepreneurs, like we're not going to have like a traditional marketing scheme where we're paying for like, you know, like let's say like radio spots and TV spots. Yeah. A lot of the yeah. money that we're going to have for marketing is going to be spent on our consumers and on supporting people that we look at as bold. Right. Um, so for us, we're trying to create something that that's kind of different in the space, you know, where it, it's, it's, you know, if you're somebody that just likes good liquor and, and dope, you know, really dope design package bottles, you can have that. But if you actually want something more, because for example, if you say, hey, I bought 10 bottles and I have these 10 tokens and we say, hey, if you have a token, we're having an event in Atlanta and you have a token, it, it counts as a ticket to your entry. Right. Mm -hmm. And you cannot say, well, I'm only one person. Well, I can hit up nine of my friends and hey, look, I got these nine other tickets if you guys want to come to this event. Right. So kind of giving people th those experiences with the product rather than, you know, just kind of like stopping there at, you know, just the basic product. Um, really? so we, yeah. So we kind of want to have something that's like, you know, interactive and, you know, in a way innovative. OK. And our well, I know you do wholesale uh, mm -hmm. for your vendors. If your wholesalers pay in Bitcoin, do they get a discount? No. <laughs> So for me, one of the one of the things that uh, was really important for me because it's a high end brand is um, I don't we we're not looking to do like uh, in, at least for the tequila we're not looking to do wholesale discounts because uh, so it doesn't matter if the wholesaler like at, at least this is kind of the plan right um, it doesn't we 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 don't because if you offer the discount that means then they discount it to the retailer and then that means okay. the retailer okay. will discount it to the buyer. And you know, it's was the yesterday's not price is not today's price. And so right. we kind of want that price point to be respected because we we want people that you know see value in this to be a part of this. Like we right. don't want to be something that's offered at discount. So we don't want to incentivize anybody in the T three tier structure to discount the product, you know. Right. Um, because if even if somebody buys one bottle, if there's somebody who buys one bottle but then they turn post notifications on for their the IG and the Twitter. And then they they stick to the bottle and you know whenever we uh have a, a a marketing blast because you can actually interact with the bottle right we can actually send things out directly to the bottle for you to like tap the bottle and interact with it so we can say hey first 10 people to tap their bottles get a, a free t-shirt right so even if you buy one bottle if you're really interacting with the brand you can probably get a bunch of free things that eclipse what you spend on the one bottle right and that's kind of the behavior we're trying to incentivize because that makes sense for marketing spend for us because yeah. if you already ha have to spend money on marketing it kind of makes sense to spend money on the people buying the product because you know the 80 20 rule where 80 percent of your sales come from 20 percent of your customers anyway and those 20 percent usually are the repeat loyal customers so mm -hmm. for us it just kind of like makes sense to like go that route so one of these days you're going to go to somebody's house and they're going to have all these bottles yeah. lined up <laughs> and you're for you to see yeah. so they can figure out what yeah. you want which one is working out? But no, I am super excited about your brand. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I guess I'll make the announcement today for those who didn't come to Wine, Women, and Crypto. Um, we now have our official wine that we're going to be using every single month, which will be Bitcoin Wines. And so I'm excited about that and really looking to work with you all on some branding and some other ideas that I've had and, you know, I'm just excited about that. And um, so let the viewers know what you told me um, offline in reference to white labeling. Yeah, yeah. So um, the thing that's really important for me is that just kind of increasing the the access mm -hmm. to creating people, people being able to create their own brands, right? Especially people that look like us. We don't, we're not, you know, there aren't a lot of people that look like us in that space yet. And, you know, that needs to change because the diversity brings innovation it brings different ideas and you know it, it actually allows the space to grow and, and flourish so what we're doing is allowing people to actually come in and instead of investing in a vineyard and all the production and the compliance will actually help everybody with that and pretty much all they'll be responsible for is kind of designing their their branding their, their label their packaging whatever the case may be and then moving forward with kind of like getting their inventory and uh depending on if they want to go with like a big order and go like trying to land a wholesaler and go into retail, depending on the state, we can help them with that too. But, you know, even if they just want to start off with, you know, let's say like 500 bottles and kind of create a, a direct to consumer route where they can build a website and kind of take online orders, we can help them with that as well. 
So for me, I don't want to just like kind of like gatekeep and like have be able to create this thing and like kind of keep it to myself. Like no, like let's all eat here, let's all win, let's all create, let's all grow, let's all kind of kind of build together, right? Because for me, there's there's so much money in the world. There's too much, right? We know this. They print it out. <laughs> That's the whole reason why we believe in Bitcoin. They literally print this out in a room. So for me to try to be stingy with something that's unlimited doesn't make sense, right? So I, if, if anything, I want I want to be as like bountiful with it as possible so we can grab that scarce asset before that price kind of runs up on us and it's harder to accumulate that, you know? Right. So for me, it's like kind of offering that route for people who want to like build their own line brand to say, hey, like reach out to us and, you know, we'll help make it happen. Um, and then even like what you were mentioning about, you know, do these, uh, do these wholesalers, you know, do they pay in the Bitcoin space yet? Like, no, but you know, when you think about, you know, ways to set it up, you can utilize something like open node and accept USD and then kind of set a percentage of saying, Hey, I want 30% of this converted to Bitcoin and the rest kept in USD. So you, there's yeah. ways for us, like help you set that up as well. Um, to where you can actually, you know, just kind of have that, that automatic conversion. Yes. And, and again, this is just credible. I think all incredible. Everything that you're doing is just great. Um, I just would like for you to take a couple moments to say something to someone that's your age or younger that may be thinking about starting their own business and wanting to get into Bitcoin and wanting to accept Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, I, I say it to folks all the time, you know, being in business, is definitely uh, a challenge, but it is definitely rewarding. And so what would you tell a somebody that's about your, I'm assuming you're under 30. Yeah. So yeah. I, there, I, was, I don't want to go all the way down to 18, but I'm assuming <laughs> you're under 30, so I'll say that. Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone that's under 30 that is looking at opening a business and really waiting for the very right time to get in business? Um, I, I never wanted to like rush anybody either because everybody has their own time, right? Everybody kind of comes into their own, but for the people that like feel like they should do it, like just do it. Like even if you fail, you have so much life left. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. Like that's again is when I realized when I was looking at people like for example the creator of Zara, where he like literally became into his riches now in his like sixties, right? A lot of these people that you look as really successful, they didn't hit their stride to like their fifties and their sixties to where they're like rich and wealthy, right? This isn't something that you obtain at this age, but you have to start laying those those bricks down now so that by the time that you're there, it's a way easier path than trying to like kind of going into that entrepreneur endeavors, you know, when, when you're in your fifties or sixties, then it's a little bit harder because just physically your body has already been taking a toll. Right. Um, so it's, it's where you kind of want to have that, that kind of drive, I'm not saying that like your age determines your drive, but you know, when, when, when you kind of get to a certain age, when you kind of feel like you can't fail as much because you, you think your time is limited. So if you have more time, you fail. <laughs> what's, what's, yeah. You can pick yourself back up, right? It's it's okay to fail. I, I I think so many people are just so so scared to be embarrassed, and I'm just like, dude, everybody that successful did wasn't successful on their first try, or um, you know, they didn't just do the first thing and it was amazing. Like, there's so many people that you look at now, it's like, oh my god, they're amazing that they failed a bunch, right? You know, even when I talk to people, especially my age and people that look like me, and then I I look at like people in Silicon Valley where they have titles called serial entrepreneurs. It's mind blowing where they brag about failing. <laughs> Do you know this is a well, I'm one of those. I'm yeah. one of those. No, I'm one and, of those. And I'm trying to tell people, I'm like, dude, it's okay to fail. Like some people actually like to see that you've tried something, you know, and then you can learn from your failures. It's, 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 it's not something that like, and especially in our day and age because of social media, everybody thinks like, man, if everybody finds out, it's going to look bad. And this is, I'm like, dude, don't yes. worry about that. Build for you, build for you for the long term, right? right. Um, and, and so for, you know, just looking at, you know, people my age, you know, the worst that can happen is like, you're back in the same position that you're at now, right? Yeah. Like, jobs aren't going anywhere. You can always fall back into a job. You know, just yeah. take that risk now and try to create something for yourself 
or you can even do it while you're working. You don't have to like cold turkey quit your job. You can work on both at the same time. So then when you actually have that business running to a point where you say, okay, I can sustain it by itself, then you can kind of like pivot through that. Um, I just like, I'm like a full send kind of person. I just like always, <laughs> I don't know how to do things small. It's like one of my- That's, that's like, all right. Like, so a, a me, young man like, after my own heart i absolutely love it that is that is awesome and and that's a great word uh that you just gave to them and i hope that those that are listening are taking heed to what you're saying now you're you're half my age less than half my age actually so uh you know and and i it, it's, it's just incredible to hear somebody in this day and age uh, have such wisdom at such a young age. And so uh, I'm going to definitely be a support of your business and really, really looking forward to my Bitcoin wines and yeah, um, yeah. my <laughs> my Serpente <laughs> yeah. tequila. I, I can't wait to taste that as well. And so, um, well, yeah, that's, I mean, did you have any other thing that you wanted to share? Anything that, any other projects that you're looking forward to? Any, I mean, anything. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, when we're talking about why people should accept Bitcoin for their business, you know, when you're saying, you know, there's there's a government that's just continuously printing out money. This isn't me telling you to put all your cash reserves for your business in Bitcoin. No. But the money that you were going to save and keep on your, you know, some of the money on your balance sheet, you know, you should put some of that in Bitcoin. Right. Because it's going to be funny because we're going to be a new brand. But then in 10, 15 years, people are like, wait, why is your balance sheet so crazy? <laughs> yeah. Because we, we have Bitcoin on it, right? Yeah. We, we don't have the same amount of sales, but we have, you know, this other asset that we saved. And, you know, for us, because of the continuous money print that they at this point really can't stop, um, you know, it's, it's kind of our hedge against that. Um, and so even, for example, like the, 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 the tokens that we're using for uh, the user experience and authentication, those are going to be Bitcoin based NFTs as well. Right. Okay. You know, and, you know, in this space where, you know, I'm not necessarily in the space of like, um, you know, how NFTs are now, where it's all like, you know, really speculative. I've, I've yeah. kind of been in the space of utilizing it for product authentication, consumer interaction. Right. And um, I love art, like actual, like really amazing artists that love to like create what they love. Um, so those are the kind of people we'll be supporting. So like the, the platform that we're working on is, is Bitcoin based as well, um, utilizing liquid, right? And this is a side chain. So it's, it's, it's quote unquote green, it's eco-friendly, mm -hmm. utilizes mm -hmm. like less energy than a credit card swipe to actually issue out these uh, digital assets. It's, you know, mm. just a few pennies to uh, transact on there. Uh, so, you know, we don't, we're not running with, you know, high gas fees, uh, like certain other blockchains and, you know, being able to, uh, be uh, compatible with Lightning, right? So somebody can open up Cash App, buy Bitcoin uh, on chain or utilizing Lightning and actually purchase their NFT uh, right. with that, you know? So, right. you, know, um, you know, it's just, for us, it's a really exciting space because, you know, we're, I, I could release an NFT project last year or the year before that and, you know, just run to the races, but we're, we're building for the long term here, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to build things that I believe are going to outlive me, right? And um, there's only really one chain I trust to do that on, right? You know, there's a lot of people creating projects on that they're trying to build for the long term, but they might outlive these chains. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of scary for you to think about that, that you're going to dedicate all this time and work and effort to something that might not be here in 15, 20 years. Um, yeah. Like I mentioned, the, the one thing I do believe will be here uh, for sure, without a doubt, is, you know, Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, that's a drop the mic moment. Absolutely. <laughs> So again, uh, I, I mean, wise beyond your years. So I just Thank really you. I appreciate it. Yes. And all that you're doing. And um, we are so looking forward to this year. This is going to be an incredible year for us all. And there's just so many, so many, so many opportunities. When I think of, um, you know, just some after I got off talking with you, I thought of so many ideas. Yeah. And there's so many things that I need to share with you about people that you can actually uh, reach out to and, and get some things going. So I'm looking forward to making those connections uh, with you. And so that is it. So I'm not sure if we have any questions in the chat, uh, but I would like to, again, thank you for coming on today. And if there are any questions, oh, someone says, 
Um, what is the lead time on the white label from the artwork to delivery? And I yeah. kind of got my yeah. screenshot split here. Um, I know the supply chain is fractured a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the beautiful thing is like, for example, we had, we had issues with the tequila that kind of pushes back. We were supposed to launch, a, a, you know, in the fall of last year, but because of some regulatory errors and issues, we were pushed to this year. But with the wine, the wine is domestic. It's already in the U S. So from, let's say you already created the artwork for your label and then you submit, uh, you provide us with your label and then you pay for like that initial inventory. It'll the turnaround time if you're not doing like customized labels. If you want to do something a little bit more exotic or a little bit more uh, quote unquote extra, right? We'll have to do like you know a different uh, label design. But the turnaround time is usually around like four to five weeks, right? So the wine is kind of already ready, right? You kind of pick the wine you want, and then from there we can kind of you know place your your labels on those on that inventory. And and like I mentioned, if you're doing the DTC route, like the direct to consumer route. Uh, where you're doing like online orders, you you pretty much never have to like touch anything, right? You know, we kind of take care of the, the the shipping stuff for you. Where somebody places an order, like let's say you want to submit all your orders every two three days, you kind of get those orders to us, and then those orders are shipped out directly to their door, right? They sign for it if they're 21 and up, and you know, kind of yeah, pretty. <laughs> it's crazy when I think about it because the tequila was worlds apart different from the wine. Like it was, the tequila was so difficult. <laughs> so, like when you, when I look at that compared to the wine, I'm like, I can't believe it's like so much more like uh, 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 more efficient and like more simple because it's a, it's a domestic product, right? Right, um, right. So, um, Yeah, the turnaround time is not, is not that long at all from when you actually, uh, when we submit your labels and get them approved federally with the TTB. And um, from you paying like that initial inventory purchase. That is awesome. That's awesome. That I wasn't expecting to hear that lead time. Um, what about a Dow for your brand? <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever whenever I think about Dow's, I, I I kind of tell people I'm like, man, for me, I, I'm already kind of involved with the original Dow, which is Bitcoin. I look at Bitcoin as like the original Dow because you know you're running. Dow. Yeah, if you run a node, you're part of the DAO. You get a say so on what happens, right? Um, and, you know, when you think about majority, 90%, like, I don't think there's anything else with that kind of consensus requirement <laughs> when you yeah. think about votes, right? So um, uh, we're, we're not, that, that's the thing, too. We don't want to, like, kind of, like, play into a lot of the, the hype things to, the hype. Just, like, yeah. run up the money. Um, if, even if I never release a single NFT or a single, like, from when I got the first kind of first letter, I realized I was like, okay, I'm I'm doing the right thing here. I, I can just sell the tequila and that's it, and like I, I'll be okay. And for me, money wasn't why I even came to this. I just wanted I love to create things, you know. Um, so money's never going to be the 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 driving point for me. And I, I realized like a lot of people that you know th that's the reason why they'll create some of these things. And I don't want to kind of like taint something that I know is going to be amazing regardless. So, and, and like I mentioned, that's the reason why I didn't, like, I've had, like, offers for percentages in the company, um, like, before we, we've even sold a bottle, we've had, like, you know, six-figure offers to invest in the company, and for me, it was like, man, if, if I haven't sold anything yet, and they see the value in that, okay, no. <laughs> no, like, this, like I mentioned, right. it's something that's for right. Me, yeah, for me, this is a legacy play, and I really want this to be my family, um, you know, like, for generations, you know, that'll be awesome. Cause we're gonna do a bunch of, uh, like, even though I'm doing tequila, it's a spirits company. So tequila is one of the brands, right? So we're, we're eventually gonna do a vodka, a gin, a whiskey, a, a rum, bourbon, you know, kind of like the, the full lineup. And it's all gonna be high-end luxury spirits. So for me, but this one's like, like, kind of like, you know, like quote unquote, my baby, <laughs> it's, it's special <laughs> to me, right? So um, okay. I, don't, I don't know if I'm gonna explore something like that for this. Um, I, I just kind of wanna like, kind of, you know, build something that's 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 real and tangible and you know kind of have uh control of the direction that it goes in yes well thank you for that and we want to thank you mclean for uh those questions and and really invoking some conversation <laughs> up towards the end but again we appreciate you brother i'm proud of you cannot wait to work with you uh if you all want to find out about his tequila brand you can go to, it's actually on the screen. 
and um, just go to his, it looks like Facebook, and I gotta move my screen around to see what this other one is. Uh, Facebook and, oh, is that YouTube? So, no, that's uh, Twitter, oh, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, and Facebook. Twitter. I see it, I see it. Yeah. So All right. um, in, in the next coming months, we're gonna have like a complete like, you know, revamp in terms of our digital assets. So some of that stuff there is, it's, you know, our, our, it's kind of like our, our older photos. But now as we come into getting our, our green light for our new production permit, um, we're going to be looking to like start putting out more um, more photos and videos for you guys to enjoy. But um, for people interested in seeing what it looks like and, you know, what the brand looks like, you know, it's it's the, those are the links there for you to check out. All right. And make sure, ladies and gentlemen, you follow him on IG as well as Twitter. Uh, please follow me as well. I'm Naja Roberts on all social media. No underscores, no no dots, no any of that because we got a lot of imposters. So we want to make <laughs> yeah. sure we're following the right people. So um, I am going to. Um, uh, oh, Angela says congratulations on the wine venture. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. So <laughs> I'm excited. I'm telling you, I'm excited because I have. Um, my, my staff will tell you, I have looked through a couple, a couple of wine companies, uh, to try to work with. And they just, for what, for whatever reason, they didn't work out. Cause here you came, right? And this is, <laughs> this is just awesome. So I yeah. want to say thank you. And crypto blockchain plug wants to say thank you. And we will see you at the top and to each and every one of you that are listening and watching today. We so appreciate you. We cannot do this without you. You are, are the most important part of what we do, how we educate, and the products that we have for products and services is for our community. And so I love to see another entrepreneur that's in this for the community and really just trying to do something different and innovative. So again, I'm just, I'm so ecstatic. So with that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you all have an incredible, incredible evening. And thank you, Mayo, again, Mayo. Uh, you yeah. want to Mayo, Mayo no, right? I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm indifferent, really, though. Like, for me, like, I've, I've, heard both. I've heard both my whole life. I like Mayo. Yeah, as long as you're saying it with respect and love, it's all good, you know? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's definitely respect and love. Yeah. So that being <laughs> said, you enjoy the rest of your evening. And again, you thank know. you for coming. And we will be talking to you soon. Peace and blessings. Have a great night.